Hello there, welcome to Craft with Fee. We're up to week five of the 12 weeks of Christmas stitch along um, on the Tilda group on Facebook and we are doing the videos here on YouTube. So this week we're going to be making a gorgeous little coin purse. It's got a flex frame in it so it's got the little top that closes, opens and closes. We just press the sides. I've made it a decent uh, length. You can shorten it up if you want to, or you could even make it longer and turn it into a glass case to put your glasses in. Totally up to you, but the measurements that I'm going to give you are for this size here. So I've actually made it big enough so that I can put my medication um, sleeves in here and pop it in my handbag. You know sometimes when you put headache tablets or whatever in your bag and they get a bit worn and they start popping out of there? little packets. Well, I thought that if I put the packets into this, into my handbag, it'll be nice and safe and they won't come apart. And if they do, they'll just be there inside the little purse. So what do you need? Okay, so let's go through the supplies. You're going to need to choose one of your beautiful Maple Farm fabrics. So I'm going to go with this one. Um, and you also need some fabric for the lining. Now, if you bought the kit you will have this lining which matches this one here perfectly but it also matches a few of the others in the range as well so totally up to you so you need those you also need some parlan which is a fusible lightweight wadding that just gives it a bit of uh, body you will need some felt because we're going to do a little applique on the front of this one so i've chosen these two from the um the ones that were in the kit because they match this fabric really well i think so we've got those. You'll also need an eight and a half centimeter flex frame. Now, if you bought one of the kits, you'll have this in there. If you don't have the kit, you can purchase these on kittyrosecottage.com. They come in a two pack, they're $7.50. So you'll find them on the website, but you definitely need one of those. And of course the little flex frame comes with a little pin and I'll show you how to insert that. You'll also need some applique paper for the felt. We're using one called Tilda Fix. Um, that was also in the little kit. You will also need some clips. I prefer to use those for this project than pins. They're much easier. You'll need some paper scissors and you'll need some fabric scissors. You'll also need a little pair of pliers so that you can put the pin in. Uh, you'll also need a marking pen for your fabric. I'm using a heat friction pen so the heat will remove this but I also need to use a normal pen because I need a marking for the back of the paper here not to be removed so you need something permanent for that and I've also got a paintbrush here because I like to use this end as my perky for my corners and I've also got a ruler and a rotary cutter so they're all the bits that you're going to need so I just thought I'd run through those with you to begin with so that we make sure that we've got everything now for the cutting so I've already pre-cut mine but you you can, if you want to do a whole heap of these at once, you can just cut, 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 and you can have them all lined up, and they take no time at all to make. So you need two pieces of the lining, two pieces of the fusible wadding, and two pieces of the outer fabric, and they all need to measure three and three quarters of an inch wide, and the length is seven and a half inches. Okay, so that's what they need to be. So we're just going to pop the lining to one side for a moment and we're going to fuse the parlan. So we've got the glue side here which is the real bobbly side. You can feel the glue on that. The other side is smooth. So you just need to take that and you need to put your outer fabric down so that the wrong side of the fabric is on the glue. And then we'll take that over to the iron and we'll use a bit of steam and we'll fuse that and we'll come back. Okay, there we go. So they're both fused now. So we're going to take our ruler and we're going to take our heat removable or you can use a uh, water erasable pen. And on one of these, we're just gonna turn it off to the side there and we're going to measure down two and a half inches from the top. Now, if you're using a directional fabric like I am, it make sure that you are at the top and not the bottom. So two and a half inches, and we just want to just pop a little mark there and a little mark there, just so we can see the invisible line that's gonna go across. Now, if you're confident that this is not gonna come back onto your fabric, uh, or you're using a water-soluble pen, you can draw a line directly across there because it will be removed. 
this this friction pen under some circumstances does come back in cold temperatures especially and I do live in a cold climate so I don't want to see that line on the front of my purse into the future that's why I'm not going all the way over so that's just a little tip there for you um, so what you need to do is next is to print off the template sheet and on the template sheet you will find a little circle and a little heart and we're going to get our ordinary pen or pencil or whatever and we're going to trace these shapes onto there now I'll just do the heart just quickly because I've actually already done this off camera so we'll just trace the heart oops very difficult to do when you're not sitting over the um paper I don't want to get my head in the camera uh okay so I'm just going to show you the process of using this paper so we've drawn on the paper side and not the glue side so then we're going to cut our shapes out and then we're going to take our felt and we are going to take this over and iron this to the wrong side of your felt. And with this felt, to be honest, I couldn't find a right or a wrong side, so it's probably not going to matter too much. So fuse it down with a hot iron, then you come back and you cut it out on the cut line. So you need to do that in uh, your circle and your heart. And then when you come back, you will have them there like so. So... With this piece here, you can actually even just fold it down at your marks there so that you can see where the front of your purse is going to be. So that's going to be the front of your little flex frame purse there. So you'll need to do that so that you can see whereabouts to put your little applique. Now I'm going to place the circle around about there, which is sort of the centre. You've got to remember you're going to have a quarter inch um, off the bottom as well. And then to take the paper off, you just simply tear it and then just peel it off. And then you can take it back over to the iron and you can fuse it. So I would fuse the heart to the circle first um, before you take the paper off, which I should have done. Um, and then you can take the paper off the circle and then fuse that to your fabric. So I'll go and do that and I'll be back. Okay, so there we go. So now you can go and stitch that if you wish. You can do a blanket stitch around it. You can do it on the machine, maybe even a chain stitch. Um, so we'll do that and we'll come back. And there we go, it's all done. So I have actually chain stitched around mine and I've used a bit of a contrast thread. So you can see there. Okay, what we're going to do now is pop the front and the back together, right sides facing. And then we're going to remember where that top was. So this is the top here. And we're going to measure down two and a half inches again. Now, because we're on the inside, this time we can run a line straight across. So we're going to take some clips and we're just going to clip, clip all this together. And we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to start at the bottom of our drawn line and we're going to stitch all the way down, all the way across the bottom and then all the way back up and we're going to stop at that line there. Now make sure that you do a locking stitch at the start and the end. Um, so you need to do that on the, your outer piece. You can then take your lining piece and you can do the same thing with your measuring. You can measure two and a half inches from the top and pop them together, right sides together. That didn't work very well, did it? Let's try that again. There we go. So we've got right sides together, the two pieces are there together. So we'll just clip them the same way. But before we do that, we're going to make a mark on one side. So we're going to make a mark uh, about two inches down from that line and then leave a two inch opening and then we're going to make another mark. So we're actually going to sew from that line to that line, then we're going to leave that gap for turning and then we're going to stitch from that mark right down to the corner. We're going to go right along the bottom and then we're going to come right back up the side again to this line and don't forget those locking stitches. So I'll go off to the machine and we'll go and do that. Okay, there we go. So I've taken it over to the ironing board as well and given it an iron, so I've removed those marks. I'll just uh, cut off my little loose thread there. Okay, so on the lining piece, I want you to just take off the corner 
there just before the stitching we're just taking away a little bit of that bulk that's all and on your outside piece we're going to do the same so we're just going to cut away a bit of that bulk make sure you don't go too close to your stitching but then we're also going to snip down because we did have a quarter inch seam on the sewing I probably should have told you that but we're actually going to take away about an eighth of an inch of the bulk so that our seams aren't too thick when we go to turn so you can see there that I've just left about a quarter of an inch uh, sorry an eighth of an inch now come in from where you start and stop on the sides here We don't want to take it away from this part here. We just want to take it away from the area that we've sewn. So we just sort of go back out like that. And there we go. We'll get rid of all that rubbish. Okay. So what we're going to do now is turn our outer piece to the right side. Like that. And we're going to need our little paintbrush or some sort of pokey tool. And we need to poke those corners out. Now, as you all know, I'm a great advocate of um, ironing as you go. So I, I do I do want you to um, iron at this point so that you get a nice flat bottom. Because if you don't iron, you where you've poked your corners, you can see here, see how it stretches and you've got like a dip? If you don't iron that out flat, it's actually going to look like that um, at the end. So just take the extra bit of time here now and just get those corners um, at right angles and give it a nice flat uh, iron. So we'll just go and do that quickly. And there we go. So we've got a lovely, nice, neat bottom there now. We're going to take the lining piece and we're going to open it up so it's still the way it was, the wrong side. We're going to open it up and we're just going to fold up our outer and we're just going to poke it inside so that it goes down in like so. And then we're going to match up the raw edges here at the top. So our lining and our outer fabric, we'll just line them up like that. So give them a clip. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side there. And then we'll take it over to the machine and stitch straight across. There you go. So we'll go and do that. Okay, that's that done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew down these sides, but we're going to do them one section at a time. So you have four different sewing lines, one here, one here, and then flipped over, one here, and then one here. So all it means is that you are going to sew down the side here. So you're going to start at the top and you're going to go right down to that point there. If you can see that there where you stopped sewing before. So make sure you do a locking stitch front and back so you can do that. Now you won't be able to do that side at the same time because you won't be able to clip them and sew them because the clips will get in the way. Um, but you can do both sides like this and then you can come back and you can do the other two sides as well. So just go and sew all four of those and then we'll come back. Okay, there we go. So you can see that I've sewn down those and that's all done. Now so before we turn it to the right side, we're going to clip these corners again just to get rid of a little bit of the bulk. It'll just make give you a bit of a neater finish at the end. So we'll do that. Now we're going to turn it back through the hole in our lining. Now hopefully you've left your two inches and it should be fairly easy for you to pull it through. You can see there it's going to come through very easily. Two inches might sound a little bit excessive, but it's actually what you do need to make sure you're not going to damage your fabric. So you've got a bit to poke out there. You've got what I call the two tongues here. So these are the two sections that we just sewed, and then you've got your lining. So you'll need to get something to poke the corners out once again. So this is the lining bottom. 
we're going to just poke those corners through like that and then we have our section there that we had opened and then we'll use that hole to go through up into the corners of this tongue the double tongue and just poke those corners through nice and neat okay so now before we put that lining down back into the purse we're going to take it over to the ironing board and we're going to iron it so that the seam is closed and we're also going to iron these tongues so we have nice right angles on our corners okay so beautiful and uh, neat there because we've pressed it now we've got that lining still poking out we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to close it um, just with a little straight stitch on the outside now of course you can do it by hand if you want to if you want it to be invisible um, but because it's on the inside it really doesn't matter too much and there we go a lovely nice neat closure so we're going to poke that lining now down inside the purse the usual pokey tool just to get it down there nice and flush there we go now we're in the home straight so what we're going to do now is we're going to operate from the front to begin with and we're going to fold over our front piece so that we have it looking like that now once again we're going to go to the iron and we're going to press it so that we get a nice crisp edge and then we're going to pop a clip on either side one there and one there and then we're going to run it through the machine so it's looking like this so this is going to be the needle of the machine here and we're going to sew down through here now use the body of the purse and you'll feel it use that as your guide because you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch from that and you'll, you'll actually if you've got a quarter inch foot on your machine just run the side of your foot down that bulk there you'll feel it underneath and that will give you a lovely quarter inch seam and you'll catch all of this down through here and then once you've done one side you can do the exact same thing to the other side so we'll come back and then we'll start to put it all together okay so now we've got it all done beautifully it's time to put our flex frame in so the flex frame has a hinged side and a side that opens now how do you tell them apart the side that opens has this little piece here coming up from the top so just grab your pliers or scissors and poke down between the two pieces and then open it up like so. You can see that that opens up. Now, what I want you to do at this stage is to inspect your flex frame. A lot of the time they have little sharp bits here um, and it does make it a little bit more difficult to thread through your fabric because unfortunately they get caught. So they're not designed perfectly well, to be honest. Um, the manufacturers obviously never made purses with them because they'd make sure that they were nice and smooth if they did. But anyway, I just pop a little bit of sticky tape because it's not going to hurt um, over those little areas there that they have got the sharp bits. Now this is obviously a bit of um, overkill on my heart on my behalf, but I have been caught with these in these seams before and they're a pain. So that's the way that I get around it. Okay, now this part here, which has got the little piece that's, that's going up, hopefully you can see that, that there, that is the top of your flex frame. So we need to slide it now into your top of your purse so that it's going through this way. So you'll need to pop both sides in at the same time because it doesn't flex enough, even though it's called a flex frame, it doesn't flex enough to get one side in completely and then allow you to get um, the other side in. You need to be sliding them both on at the same time. Now if you put the sticky tape on, you will find that this is really, really easy to do because they will slide right through. If they're getting caught, you may have to take it out and then yeah, come back and put the tape on just makes it so much easier I've battled with these for like feels like an hours trying to get them to go through and they just get caught because fabric 
naturally has little threads and um, yeah, it just tends to get caught. And it's not worth it's not worth the drama. Okay, so now we're going to take our little pin and we're going to slide it from the top down through. So it might take a little bit of jiggling to get it all lined up because it's not a perfect science. Um, and it's even more harder to do when you're trying to do it through the camera. Okay, have I got that in? Sometimes you'll get it through two and not the third. Okay, I've got it all the way in. So we need to now turn this spiky bit over and that's going to lock that pin in there. So we turn it over with our pliers and then we clip it down and you'll see that it has a closed top now and it will match the bottom which has already been closed prior. So you can see there, hopefully you can see that, that I've got that completely closed over now. So all you've got to do now is spread your fabric back over the mechanisms of your flex frame so that you can't see them or well, you'll see the ed ed edges of course but um, and you can take it over to the iron and give it a nice little press so that it's not so roughly um, but now you can open and close your little flex frame purse and that's as simple as it is it is super super easy isn't it so yep you could be making multiple of these have them all cut out do all the stages together and you could zip up you know half a dozen of these in no time at all so that's it. That's that's today's tutorial. I really do hope that you that you like the flex frame purse. I hope you give it a go. It's a great technique. Some people have um, cut up metal measuring tapes and used them as a frame. I'm not sure how they join them on the sides. You'd have to probably um, Google or YouTube that, but it truly is much easier just to go and get a flex frame. They're very inexpensive, really, for what they are. Um, yep, and you can make your purse. And as I said, you can make it longer if you wanted to put your eye glasses in there or your sunglasses or whatever but for me um, I'm going to be using this in my handbag so perfect size so I look forward to, uh, to catching you next week for next week's project if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do so and don't forget to tick that sorry click on that little bell because that'll give you a notification every time I upload a new video I'll talk to you through the week bye for now